Well, I'm going to try. If I can get, um, you know, another rest pause in, I will. Um, my rationale for doing five 10 ups at 50 was one for every 10 years. So when I turn 60, hopefully I'll have six. Welcome to Corporate Warrior, the podcast that brings you the best advice on how to improve your health, optimize performance, and maximize productivity with your host, Lawrence Neal. This podcast is brought to you by HitUni.com. HitUni.com are a provider of amazing online courses for high-intensity training qualifications. HitUni comes highly recommended by the best in the field, including Body by Science co-author Dr. Doug McGuff, Discover Strength CEO Luke Carlson, and trainer and founder of Bay.com, Drew Bay. It was founded by my friend, author, and longtime personal trainer, Simon Shawcross, who's also been a guest on the podcast. Simon has 15 years experience training clients and has supervised over 15 15,000 high intensity training workouts. Using knowledge from experts like Skylar Tanner, Dr. James Steele, Dr. Ellington Darden, Hit Uni is a goldmine for learning everything to do with high intensity training. The courses are delivered online through the website where you can learn via a variety of multimedia materials at your own pace. There's online support and a discussion forum where you can share ideas and ask for help. To learn more about high-intensity training and improve my own results, I started their personal trainer course. The content is amazing, the courses are really easy to follow, and each section is organized into bite-sized chunks that give you a real sense of achievement after you complete each one. I should also mention there is a DIY course. So this is the course for you if you're not necessarily a personal trainer, but you want to learn more about high-intensity training and how to implement it for maximum benefit in your own exercise regime. To get your exclusive Corporate Warrior 10% discount on any course you purchase, simply head on over to hituni.com, that's H-I-T-U-N-I U-N-I, dot com, and enter the coupon code CW10, that's CW in the number 10. So again, head on over to hituni.com, pick your course and enter the coupon code CW10 for 10% discount. Thank you for your support. Hi guys, I am Lawrence Neal and welcome to another episode of Corporate Warrior. I'm coming at you on a beautiful sunny morning in Galway in Ireland. This podcast is my mission to understand how to optimize productivity in health, career, business and lifestyle by interviewing the most effective people around today. My guests include zero carb world record holders like Sean Baker, medical physicians like Ted Naiman, health and fitness giants like Rob Wolf and Mark Sisson, high intensity training authors like Dr. Doug McGuff, exercise scientists, New York Times bestselling authors, highly successful business owners, startup founders and many, many more. Today's guest is Wendy McGuff, who is the wife of Dr. Doug McGuff, who you probably recognize quite well and has been on the podcast multiple times. Wendy trained at the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio to become a registered dental hygienist. She worked in the field of dental hygiene full and part time. And after moving to Seneca, South Carolina, Wendy attended Clemson University and achieved a Bachelor of Arts majoring in history. She worked for a local historic foundation until her and Doug had children. Doug and Wendy met shortly after she turned 17 and have enjoyed a shared interest in physical fitness, health and longevity. Many of their first dates consisted of playing tennis and lifting weights at the Olympic gym in San Antonio. No surprise there. And at a time when they met, Wendy was a lifeguard and water safety instructor. Her love of physical activity has been lifelong. I was very excited to speak to Wendy for a number of reasons. I wanted to change the dynamic and invite more women onto the show to learn more from a woman's perspective. So with that in mind, my girlfriend, Ashling, actually joins me as a co-host and we interviewed Wendy together, which was a very fun experiment. I thought it'd be a good idea to have Ash co-host since she is more likely to ask questions that are more pertinent to the female listeners. Um, Wendy is very, very interesting and a very driven individual. Um, and this is an excellent introduction for high intensity training from a women's perspective and especially if you are a woman or man it really doesn't matter I suppose who has a very busy life that ebbs and flows 
Um, she is in excellent physical condition. She looks fantastic. She's in her 50s and she starts her workouts off with super slow chin ups. Um, I don't know any women on the planet who are in such elite physical condition at her age. Um, this was really fun for both Ash and I. And like many of you, I am a big Dr. Doug McGuff fanboy. So it was also fun to learn about their relationship and the home dynamic, which I'm sure, uh, well, I'm, I'm assuming some of you are. are perhaps quite curious about maybe not as curious as I am Um, in this episode we cover Wendy's workout routine in detail so that includes her current routine a schedule motivation uh, workout frequency protocol supplemental activity etc and we talk about time management you know how does she do it all how does she fit in her workouts around looking after the kids and uh, helping Doug Um, we talk about her diet like what does she eat day to day how does she manage to stay away from junk food you know when she does eat junk how does she manage it is she mindful about it all of that type of stuff you know how does she stay lean and um, we talk about their relationship you know how do you how do you create a successful relationship that lasts 30 years or, or over 30 years I think in their case um, and we do get some very valuable relationship advice we talk about what it was like when her and Doug first met Arthur Jones and much much more than that so for all the show notes and links for this episode and all episodes, please go to the usual place, which is 15minutecorporatewarrior.com forward slash podcast. That's the number one five and then all spelled out minutescorporatewarrior.com forward slash podcast. And at the end, don't forget to hang around for your free gift. So without further ado, please enjoy this podcast with the one and only Wendy McGuff. Uh, Wendy, welcome to Corporate Warrior. Thank you for taking the time to come onto this uh, experimental podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. No worries. Um, so I'm going to let Ashling start things off and uh, she's going to ask you some questions about exercise. Wonderful. Hi, Wendy. Um, for me, when I'm doing high intensity training, it's all about getting there. I find it really tough to get the motivation to actually go. Uh, once I'm there, I love it. Once it's over, I love it. But what motivates you to like get up and go work out? Okay. Um, well, I like everything about it. Um, that's what motivates me. I get there. I like the mental effort and the concentration that it takes to do the movement. I like the um, just the freedom being away from everything. And it's just me and the machine. <laughs> And pushing weight, and I love the feeling of um, being able to move weight over time and feeling efficacious. So that's what keeps me in it. Um, I know as women, it's difficult because you're pulled in a million different directions, as most people are. And it doesn't matter your age or what you have going on in your life. It just seems like that's where we're at. So getting there is is good for me because when I get there, I'm away from everything else and I'm doing what I'm there to do. And it's just a complete mental um, release for me. Yeah. It's like being in the zone once you're there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And just really enjoying that moment. And I've heard um, similar comments over and over. It's just the getting there, but once I'm there, it's great. And then, then it's over and I'm just so relieved that you know, I've done the work and, and now I'm on to something else. But um, just focusing on the fact that it's just such an amazing thing to get in a place where you can perform that kind of work. And there's nowhere else in my life that can emulate that. I can't go to a commercial gym and get that experience of just, you know, you hear the hum of the fans. You're by yourself and you're doing the work. And that's what I really like. Yeah. So, so what's, your, what's your current routine, Wendy? Okay. My current routine is um, what I've been doing basically for years is basic four exercises. That's all I do on MedX and Super Slow. And I start out with a chest press. I do a pull down, overhead press. And then I do the leg press. And you've seen probably on Instagram, I like to throw in, I love, love, love <laughs> to do chin-ups. I mean, I just, oh, and I, I love that feeling of doing a chin-up and I love push-ups too. So, you know, sometimes I'll start out with chin-ups and I'll just do as many as I can get through. Sometimes I can get through four, sometimes I can get through five, 
Um, right now, what I'm loving, it's rest pause. When I get to the four and a half mark, or maybe four and three quarters, and I'm almost at the bar, I come down really as slow as I can come down off that last rep. And then I sit there for like maybe a minute and then go into that next chin up and then the next really slow rep down. So the negative is really slow. And then I'll do one more. And like you celebrating your birthday today, I just had a birthday. (laughs) So my birthday um, was I was turning 53. So I thought, okay, before I turn 50, I want to do five chin ups. That was the goal. You know, I just want to get there. So I did the five chin-ups, but when I started doing the rest pause, I told Doug, now this is what I want to do on my 53rd birthday is I want to do the five chin-ups. I want to do the three negs, and then I've got the (laughs) five and three. (laughs) So anyways, so that's what I'm doing now. I mean, I just kind of combine, you know, the chin-ups at the beginning, push-ups at the end. Sometimes I'll throw in a pre-exhaust with a squat. Um, you know, and Doug's there, of course, I'm not running through all this equipment by myself and I'm not, um, there with a trainer from the facility. He's usually there with me when I'm doing that. So, oh, sorry, Wendy, just to interrupt quickly, does he, does he time you, does he time you during the exercises? Um, usually I time myself. I'm looking at, we've got clocks at every machine and I'm just, you know, I'm hitting the sweet spot, and that's usually before it gets to two minutes. And so if I'm at a minute and a half sometimes, that's fine with me. I can get there. Sometimes I'm closer to two. If I get to two minutes, then we up the weight, and, you know, then I'm on to a new weight. Do you want a question or do I? Um, And I was actually just talking to uh, John Little earlier today. Uh, yeah, you probably know quite well. Uh, and he was telling me that you work out once every two weeks. Is that true? Or, or have you, is, what is your frequency at the moment? That is a great question. Because for years, that's where I was at. I was working out once every two weeks. When I had the kids being small, and I was exhausted most of the time. And this is a really good point for women, for people who are busy, just to be flexible. Because When I had two kids under the age of two and a rotating schedule with Doug working five shifts that rotate every day, the sleep was just deprivation was high and I could not balance the recovery with what I had going on with our lifestyle, with kids being young. And this went on for years. I mean, it hasn't been until the last two and a half years up to the past two and a half years. Now I'm working out when I work at the facility, I'm working out every seven to 10 days. It just depends. And I'm always judging how am I feeling? You know, my, did I get enough rest? That seems to be a big one for me. If I have a sleep deficit, then, you know, I'm not going to do as well with recovery. And so that was um, absolutely the case for years. And that is pretty much unheard of for most people. Cool. Did you say it was your, sorry if I misunderstood this, did you say it was your birthday today? No, my oh. birthday was on the 30th. Oh, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. 30, 30, oh, so it's just gone. Sorry. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. And, and so are you going to do, so for your next birthday, will you set some new goals then for, for the gym? Well, I'm going to try. If I can get, um, you know, another rest pause in. I will. um, My rationale for doing five chin-ups at 50 was one for every 10 years. So when I turn 60, hopefully I'll have six. I love that. That's that's so unusual to hear. You don't often hear like, you know, people setting challenging goals like that at their birthday. Birthday is normally a a, a relaxing, fun time where people are stuffing their face with cake. (laughs) Well, I've done my share of that in the past few days. Sure. Um, but feel free to jump in, Ash, at any point. Uh, what? So, okay. So, as as a alongside your uh, high intensity training, what other yeah. exercise or physical activities do you participate um, in in a solo yourself or as a family these days? What I like to do right now is swim, and you know, I'll I'll do you know twenty five laps 
in the pool. It's not an Olympic size pool. One lap is there and back. So I'll do that maybe three times a week. Um, if I have a friend that wants to go walking, I'll walk. It depends on the season. Basically, I use whatever I have available at the time. I mean, I just try to stay flexible. If we're hiking in the fall, that's what we like to do as a family. Walking, we like to do as a family. Sometimes I'm accused of taking them on a too long of a march. <laughs> so um, if we're on vacation, that that's a big part of what we're going to do. I mean, if we're at the beach, we're walking. You know, every day it's a walk. So it's just a matter of combining what it is you like, where you're at, where you live, what you have access to. Here, we're in a very rural area, so we have a lot of mountain trails that are close by. Not that I access them as much as I thought we would when we moved here, but, I mean, we do have that available, and we do um, access that as a family. And then with the university close by, we tend to go to the university and access. Um, there are a lot of areas to walk there. So walking, hiking, swimming tends to be um, the biggies. Cool. Uh, I think Ash had a question related to your sort of time management side of things. Did yeah. You, uh, yeah. Uh, one of the questions I had written down was how do you manage with, you know, you have two children, you're working, you're also trying to like help dog and then you still manage to work out. Um, so it's just kind of like, how do you kind of manage your day? Do you sit down and decide, you know, on a Sunday night what you're going to do throughout the week or is it just a day to day thing? That's an, another really great question. What I found is it tends to be... Um, what I'll do is I'll look at Doug's schedule for the week, and then I look at the kids' schedule, and even if I plan something, sometimes it doesn't work out because something's going to come up, and once again, it's all about being flexible. Um, I'd say I work out every Oh, well, We just lost you. Sorry, we can we can edit and, this. Oh, and, you just you just cut out there for a second, Wendy. For can you just repeat Wendy. the can last repeat ten seconds? Okay. Um, basically, just looking at Doug's schedule, I try to schedule what I have going during the week, but oftentimes I have to adjust, and it works out because I'm not spending more than twenty minutes there at Ultimate Exercise, so I can I can make it work. So that's usually how I negotiate everybody's schedule. Can, can I ask? Yeah, actually, no, I'll, I'll save this one to later, but um, I'll let Ash ask a question about diet. Which, yeah. Sure. So I was previously following the slow carb um, diet, but I found it very hard because I'm also a vegetarian. Um, so I wanted to kind of know how you manage as well your day-to-day -day diet. Do you have cheat meals or do you just have like a day at the weekend that you have a cheat kind of day, anything like that? Okay. Well, diet, I have come to different understandings as I've gotten older of what I can and can't get away with. I'm five feet tall. Doesn't give me a lot of room for error here. You know, I mean, if I put on five pounds, I really feel it. I mean, it's just like a ton of weight. Um, and, you know, to someone else, they'd say, oh, wow, five pounds, you know, cry me a river. But, you know, five pounds on a five foot frame is a lot. Yeah. So yeah. basically, you know, I've never done the intermittent fasting up until the last couple of weeks. That's something that I'm incorporating. I'm doing twice a week now. Um, I have never done completely restrictive with the carbs although I don't go out of my way to eat carbs. It's not one of those things that I create, you know, it's like my go-to food. Yeah. Um, yeah. But my go-to food, and especially when the kids were younger, was sugar. And I couldn't get enough of it. And um, so that's where I kind of started with the diet. I started looking at what I was doing when the kids were younger in particular because it was tough to balance all this stuff. And if there was a bag of something around, I was in it. And so I had to start out somewhere. So I started out with sugar, basically, and started eliminating that, 
started looking at, you know, where am I getting the extra food during the day? And if it came out of a bag or a box, that was a big problem for me. Because with kids, a lot of stuff the kids are going to eat is going to come out of a bag or a box. And I wanted quick energy to combat the fatigue, and it was coming from those sources. So I started eliminating as much as I could that mentality of bag and box and sugar. I started out with the sugar first, just started it, eliminating it from my coffee. That was just the one thing. You know, if I can just get rid of the sugar that I'm adding every morning to my coffee. And then it kind of snowballed from there, and I haven't had that craving for sugar like I used to. So that kind of evolved over time. My kids are 15 and 13 now, and so, and I'm an older mom. So I'm looking at, okay, what variables can I affect now? And portion control has been big. Um, Single serving size, if I can buy them popcorn and they want popcorn in a big bag, if I can get the single serving size bag, then I can eat that and not have my hand in a big bag where I'm not like, oh, wow, two, you know, two handfuls was going to be my limit, but I've been sitting here looking out the window for 15 minutes, right? (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so so now what I'm doing is, um, you know, I'm not completely carb restricted. I'm really um, exercising portion control. And I'm doing intermittent fasting about twice a week. So that's where I am now. But I've been, um, you know, a person going through perimenopause since the age of 43. I really feel like that's when stuff started to change. So, you know, you have to look at your basic, you know, what is going on with your hormonal makeup at the time. And so now that I'm 53, I'm taking another look at it because, You know, a lot of people that I know are like, well, you're just going to have to come to a realization that, you know, your hormonal environment is such now that you're not going to be able to lose the weight. You're not going to be able to maintain. And I take that as a challenge. So (laughs) I'm like, okay, well, you know, this is a new phase and I'm going to experiment, see where it takes me. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it as a challenge rather than something that just stops you from kind of pursuing your goals Uh, I know especially when I'm hormonal like during the different times of the month like that's when I'm different I don't go for sugar I go for carbs so I'll sit down with the whole bowl of roast potatoes and just eat that so I understand the whole portion control it's a really good idea (laughs) sure and then you know when you're putting on all this muscle and then you're putting on fat and then you have what you're talking about that you know, week before where your appetite gets to be a little bit crazy, what your cravings a little crazy, maybe you're eating a lot more sodium than you normally would, and you're already feeling bloated. Yeah. And that's yeah. the case. I mean, it's salty sweet. Everybody I talk to you, salty sweet, that's all they want, you know. <laughs> and so you're already feeling, you know, as you start weight training, you're already feeling like, wow, I've got all this muscle on me, but I haven't lost this fat. And now I'm looking at this 10-day period in my month where I feel bloated on top of that. And so this is what I talk to women about all the time. It's just like, how do you balance that feeling? You know, this is how my clothes fit right now. And I'm not liking that feeling of, you know, it feels tighter than it normally does because, you know, I put on this muscle, but I haven't lost this fat. And so as you go through, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that it's a balance in so many realms between lifestyle, where you are in age, um, and what you, like what you said, you crave a particular thing, someone else might crave something else, and how are you as an individual going to come to the decisions that work for you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. What, so I know you've described like... Um, kind of your your preferences wendy and like you know that you do things like intermittent fasting but can you give us like what does a snapshot of an average day look like from a meal perspective okay um like today what i had at one o'clock was i usually have berries of some sort um you know blackberries blueberries right now they're in season so fruits that are in season i'll cut up like right now we have peaches so but today i had blackberries blueberries i had two handfuls of almonds 
I had, um, we had these single serving guacamole Mm -hmm. and I got to have crunch. So I get these wheat crackers and, and then I can change my lunch around to, I can do tuna with berries. Today I did guac with the crackers. Usually I do tuna with the crackers and berries and maybe a little bit of cheese. I haven't been doing really high on the dairy, but that was basically, basically my lunch was almonds, um, blackberry, blueberry, the wheat crackers that I get, and then the guacamole. So I try to get, you know, good fat in there, um, some protein and, you know, a fruit. And, you know, I'm getting my sugar, right? <laughs> I'm yeah, totally yeah. giving it up. <laughs> so um, that's lunch and dinner, you know, like last night, um, we fixed steaks, grass fed, you know, that's usually what I get is the grass fed steaks. Um, I had that. I had a split of potato, a small potato with my daughter. You know, that's my car. You know, I'm not looking for it, but I'll have it. So I had potato and then I had peas and that was it for dinner. So when I was really at the point, um, maybe four years ago where I was feeling like I need to really watch with the sugar and everything else, um, I would stop eating by six o'clock. So even though I wasn't experimenting with intermittent fasting, I put a limit, you know, after six, no grazing. So I did that for a while. So, you know, I can tell you this is what I'm doing right now. But depending upon what stage I've been at, I've tried different things. Do you um, do you still eat like junk food occasionally, Wendy? Do you have like, like Ash was saying, do you like designate days or are you like mindful about that? Or will you just try and yeah. steer away from it? No, I'm very mindful of that. <laughs> um, usually I have chocolate, you know, up until the last couple of weeks. Of course, having a birthday makes you kind of reassess where you're at with the chocolate. But, um, you know, a couple of pieces of chocolate every day. Every day. I mean, can't go without it. Just little, you know, fun size Hershey's is my go to thing. But, um, also, I had, there's this chocolate, and I'm a sucker for toffee and milk chocolate, and I'm not going to tell you I'm eating dark chocolate, because I'm not, <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, what I got was this stuff called Divine, it had coffee, uh, not coffee, it had toffee and chocolate, and then they quit carrying it, so I'm back to my Hershey's, so I'd have, you know, a couple of, break off a couple of, um, rows of the divine and so i would feel like you know i wasn't completely without sugar (laughs) does does doug judge you (laughs) does doug judge me well you know i you know sometimes you can feel that way because doug is so disciplined and always has been i mean he's like one of the most disciplined people i know and so, um, you know, I was the person when we were first dating to order the hamburger. And this is what kills me now because it was a burger and fries. And, you know, the sky was the limit because I never really had to worry about it early on in my life. You know, I would, and he would sit over there and he'd have the salad and he'd have the chicken on top. And, and, and the waiter would come and deliver the meal and often have to reverse it because, like, no, I've got the burger. So he's kind of, I mean, just desserts, I guess. So now at this stage of my life, I can't be that person that just goes and gets the burger and fries. And, you know, and, yeah, I want a malt milkshake, too, on top of it. It's just not working. <laughs> my issue is the opposite. Lawrence can eat whatever he wants. So he could have... Oh. burgers fries everything yeah. and he like still has a six pack and I yeah. have you know a sweet potato with my dinner and I'm bloated you know what yeah. I mean so yes. I have the opposite and usually I'm the one who says no to eating snacks he's the uh-huh. one who is loving the donuts and things like that so <laughs> Well, that, I mean, it's just tough. I mean, that's tough. And you can help each other out, keep each other honest. You know, um, right now, Doug's not a saint either. You know, I mean, (laughs) he will stand at the pantry and, you know, be eating something out of a bag because the kids, I mean, if you saw my shopping cart, you would think, who are you feeding? But I have 
the 15 year old is a carb hound, admittedly so. I mean, he, you know, if you looked at my shopping cart, you would think this lady does not practice what she preaches because it's full of carbs. So anyways, so our pantry has all this stuff for the kids. And in a stressful environment that Doug works in, he'll come home and he'll be talking about some stand there at the pantry and start eating. And I'm just looking at him like, okay, you're stressed and you're eating. He's like, yeah, you're right. Then he'll put it up. (laughs) So, um, you know, I mean, if you can support each other in that way. um, But I think that we are dealing with completely different um, types of hormonal environments at different stages. And I think that it would be a mistake to try to compare yourself to him at this point and just focus on, you know, what you can do for you and, and not worry so much that, because I'll tell you what, all that will catch him later. <laughs> so you'll already have the great habits. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll be like, yeah, I remember, because that's where I was at, because I thought, you know, I was very stubborn. I thought, okay, so I'm 32, right? I'm 32. I'm in my early 30s. I'm still in the prime of life. I'll eat whatever I want. Didn't work out that way. It was like, uh-oh, something shift in here. So enjoy your cheeseburger and fries while you can. <laughs> <laughs> I shall heed your words. Okay. <laughs> um, I've just totally uh, lost my my train of thought, but I was going to ask. I was going to ask you another question about diet. Oh, that's it. Um, you, oh, you're obviously I've watched videos of you working out in that, Wendy. It's very impressive. I don't think I know many women uh, at your age that that look as good as you do. Um, and. I, I I would say I mean like you're saying there's a there's a little bit of selection bias here right you you it sounds like you've been pretty slim your whole life and always been very active so you've had that that kind of advantage has worked well for you I guess but as you say as you as you get older it does get harder and you have to watch it otherwise you will put on the weight is that is that fair to say that yes that's a very accurate um, you know even though I've been active I like playing sports early you know, in elementary school and middle school, um, in high school, I played tennis. So, you know, that kind of counterbalanced some of the eating then, because I was really super active then, because, you know, I didn't have any other responsibilities, and I gravitated toward that. Um, And genetically, you know, I think that I take after my dad, and he's always put on muscle fairly well, Um, always been a sugar hound as well. So, you know, I've had that example to look at, you know, well, how's this body changing because my, you know, makeup is similar. So, you know, he got away with it for a long time, too. But as he approached his 40s and 50s, it became much harder for him as well. So um, that's a very accurate, you know, assessment that you have. A matter of being, you know, I've been active my whole life, but that can only get you so far. <laughs> you know yeah um no we've got so we've got a couple of uh relationship based questions if you don't mind um yeah. and then uh, and then some kind of what i call kind of bonus questions which are more about more about you and uh, so ash do you want to yeah so obviously we're a couple um yes. and you've been married for oh, over three decades now Yes, absolutely. 32 years. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and obviously, you have been through a lot with Doug, uh, going, basically growing up together, I imagine. So I just wanted to know if you have any advice for us as a couple and all the couples that are listening out there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, in terms of relationship advice, that is, I mean, it's so like you know, just workout advice is so based on the individuals involved. Um, I guess the best thing to do is just always have each other's back, you know, just always be the advocate for, you know, your partner and you'll get through just about anything. And, And we have, I mean, we've been through, we met each other, you know, I was between my junior and senior year in high school and he was in um, college and you know we had to get through all of that um, 
schooling, med school, so we've been through that, residency, my getting through dental hygiene school, um, you know, it's just been changes in medicine, kids, you know, I mean, it's like, where do you start kind of thing? <laughs> I guess the best thing that you can do is just um, advocate for each other and, you know, just stay active and involved with one another, you know, um, so that you continue to cultivate interests that you share. That sounds like good advice. Um, <laughs> I, I wondered, Wendy, since, you know, Doug's uh, uh, rise to fame with Body by Science and, um, you know, he's, he's, he's looked at as, as being, by some people, as being the, the top mind in exercise in the world right now. Um, there's quite a few people that think that. So does he, does he how has that uh, affected the dynamic of your household? It's really interested to know how that, <laughs> if it has at all. <laughs> well, um, you know, Doug's passion for exercise and physiology predates me, predates medicine, predates everything. So, you know, if you looked at Doug as a person, he, um, you know, his interest in that predominates everything. So looking at his success with Body by Science or maybe how he's viewed by other people that hasn't changed him because that's who he's been since I've known him. I mean, you know, I've asked him, what are you, he's very passionate if you're around him. I mean, it's his primary passion. Medicine is a passion as well, but I don't know, you know, if I was co to compare both, I think physiology and exercise may come out on top. So as far as the dynamics in our household or how he's affected, it's just who he is. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. It doesn't affect him. <laughs> it's just yeah. what he does. <laughs> so it's kind of like a nice way of saying he's quite humble. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think he is. I mean, I think, I think he spent a lot of time thinking about the subject over many, many years. And so in his mind, it's just, um, just a continual expression of that interest. And, and I don't see that he's affected by what has happened as a result of his passion. Do you, does he ever get recognized when you're out and about or when you travel? Um, no, not really? that I know. <laughs> Not that I, not that I'm aware of. Um, he, it's funny because people in medicine, you know, he'll talk with somebody at the hospital and he'll say, you know, like if there's somebody that's new to the area, they'll say, oh, you wrote that book. So in those instances, yeah, but if we're out and about, no. I mean, we're just, you know, out and about. <laughs> Maybe, maybe to me he's like he's like way more famous than I give him credit for it. <laughs> okay. There you go. Um, okay, so that I guess that that um, begets the question that you never really have to ground him because he's like like you say he's not uh, he's not the type to be walking around all big headed about his achievements. I suppose. <laughs> well, and he's married to me, and so probably that. I mean, if if I was to put him in the stratosphere on some kind of pedestal. Um, that's really not my job. My job is to keep things real. And so, you know, I keep things real all the time. So I don't think that he has, you know, that perspective to just feel like, you know, I'm out here and, and you know, everyone else is, is not in the stratosphere. <laughs> I don't know. But, no, I'm pretty honest with my assessments and, you know, I think he appreciates it. Yeah, I'm sure he does. <laughs> um, something that you touched on earlier was that you have women, obviously, who come into the gym and stuff, ask you questions. Yeah. Um, so what would kind of be the advice you would give someone, particularly a woman who was looking to get into lifting weights or what's kind of something that people have said, like myths that you could possibly dispel that people have about lifting weights? Okay. Um, well, I guess the biggest one is that you're going to bulk up, you know, that you need to do a certain form of exercise that will automatically make you look lean or, or have some image in your mind about 
what it is that you're going to achieve by pursuing one form of exercise over another. And the biggest worry with high intensity training is bulking up. I mean, that's what I've heard time and again. And um, to that, I think that I'm not alone. A lot of people address it on the diet side of the equation. It's like, you know, if, if you work with the diet side of the equation, don't think you're going to get into the position of bulking up. Um, and two, you know, can I do it? You know, um, and absolutely you can do it. You can get behind the weight and you can move it and you can progress and you can be successful at lifting weights. And so I think, I don't know that it's true for all women, but some women have a level of intimidation about the weight and moving the weight and, um, you know, just being able to get in there and try it and they, they understand, oh, wow, this is what I can do. I can move this weight. I can be efficient. Um, and then what we had talked about earlier, just the whole fat to muscle ratio and, and just that body image. I think most women are very concerned in those first few months when they're putting on the muscle and the diet isn't tuned and they're like, okay, I'm in this no man's land now. I don't like this. And just pushing them through that and saying, you know what, focus on your diet. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen over time. Look at long term, not short term. And keep on um, using the weight to your advantage because it's enhancing all the other areas of your life. I mean, when you go to the grocery store and you're lifting bags and, you know, you can get that cat litter or that 40-pound bag of salt or whatever it is that you have to deal with in your life or that toddler that just went through a growth spurt that's throwing a tantrum on your hip that's flipping out back, you know, putting their back backwards and you're trying to hold on to them and you feel like, I can, you know, I held on to him. He didn't flip out of my arms at this instant. And, you know, and it sounds silly, but it's just the basic um, basic things you do in your life that makes you feel so more, you know, efficacious, basically. I mean, that as women, we can get out and be strong and do the activities of daily life that propels us to something else, to another interest, to a hike to stuff maybe you haven't tried before. It just gives you that extra edge. So that's what I would tell them. Keep on keeping on. Definitely. And I <laughs> I think as well from my perspective, like you said, when you're in there and you know you do your two minutes and you put up the weight, there's a great sense of achievement when you do that that I didn't really get from, you know, maybe running on a treadmill or something like that. So yes. it's really great to kind of you know, you set a goal and you beat it and then, you know, you're on to the next week. So I do think that it's something that everyone should kind of get involved in as well. Yeah. And, and looking at it from the perspective of longevity, um, there's nothing out there that can touch it. There just isn't. Um, you know, I see so many people when I'm out my daily life that, or past 50 that, you know, you can tell they're in decline. Yeah. Um, I see young people in decline right now. And just having the ability to go through daily life and be relevant in the world and in your own life, you have to be strong. You have to be able to take care of business. And, you know, as you look around, there are many people that are weak and it's hard for them. I mean, I was in the parking lot the other day watching this woman get out of a motorized cart trying to negotiate getting from the motorized cart into her car. And I thought if only she was strong, if she had been lifting weight, she could start right now and get strong. So it's hard to watch this in daily life and see that somebody's quality of life can be impacted in such a positive way for a minimal investment of time and it I really think that you know um, as we go through an age that it it's irreplaceable I don't think anything else can touch it Definitely. it's heartbreaking I agree and you just want to run over and you know like try and convince them to do strength training and 
it's yeah. it's it's a it's yeah it's it's really strange because um quite often there i mean i struggle with my um my parents um who are older than you guys and it's just it's just some people are so um stuck in their ways that they won't try something new that regardless of how efficacious it might be which is really annoying um anyway <laughs> ran over uh i'm just curious were you, when you were pregnant did you were you doing strength training during that time as well no times? no i did not um we adopted our son eric we had been married 17 years before we adopted him and i basically had issues with fertility for years and so when I got pregnant, unexpectedly, I thought we were going to build our family through adoption. And um, unexpectedly, I got pregnant with Madeline. And I thought, because of the circumstances that, um, you know, being unable to conceive, I didn't know all the variables that were out there that I might if I miscarried, I would think, oh, it was because I did this, because it was such a long time coming. Um, I got pregnant with her 19 years into our marriage. So um, for me, Doug felt completely confident. He said, you know, go train. For me, I just could not go there mentally, because I just felt like, you know, if, if something happened within the first three months, then I would feel like, did I push the envelope here? So many people do train at that, you know, never have any problem, but I didn't want that to be in my head space if it happened. So no, I did not train during pregnancy. No, but that makes like perfect sense because obviously, even if it was something completely out of your control, you'd always blame it on that if yeah. that's what you did. And then Who's to say, you know, what might have happened? But yeah, I think I we had a friend who trained while she was um, pregnant and it worked out well. But again, yeah. it's up to the person. Yes. And, you know, the risk factors that might be there, you know, if, if they, you know, have gone through fertility or, or you know, I had to, I had to um, do a little bit of medical intervention in those first few months just because we were worried that, um, a miscarriage was going to happen. And so I was like, okay, well, we're already having to do this, so I'm not going to push the envelope. So, yeah. So it sounds like it was a bit of a miracle for you. <laughs> well, she was very unexpected, I can tell you that. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I completely appreciate your rationale for not wanting to train. Um, and just very interested because I'm always trying to be a better a better boyfriend and more supportive and and trying to get better at that. Hence, hence the reason for this this interview. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> not the only reason, obviously. Um, but like, w did Doug? When you said to Doug, you know, no, I don't feel comfortable training. Was he concerned? How did he react to that? Or was he just? Did he just trust you that you would? do the right thing and, and, and not bother you about it. I'm just really interested to know how that dynamic played itself out because I know I would be annoying. I'd, I'd be saying to Ash, like, no, you must strength train. And, yeah, right. You know? Yes, he really didn't push the issue because of what we've been through as a couple for so long. Um, this was just, you know, a different dynamic. Had it been something else, you know, if I had a broken leg or something, he probably would have said absolutely, <laughs> you know, but, but with this, he, he said, you know, no, I understand your rationale and, you know, you will pick up later on, you know, just like, you know, you're doing now. But I did, I gained a lot of weight during pregnancy. I mean, you can look at YouTube videos and I'm heavier, you know, back I don't know how many years ago, but I'm heavier in those because it took me a year to take off the weight, you know, with Matt. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, wow, now I have a flat stomach. This is great. Um, it took me a year, uh, you know, and actually being mindful about diet and, you know, doing my exercise to, to get even in the ballpark. In some ways, I didn't even recognize myself, you know, I was like, wow, but I you know, I wasn't super um, 
strict with anything during the pregnancy with her. You know, Chips Ahoy were my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so every night I was eating, you know, chocolate chip cookies. So, <laughs> so, it, so, you know, it took me a year to take off that weight. So what I'm saying is it, it's not a perfect scenario for anybody, you know, at, at any stage of your life. You just have to do what works for you at the time. You know, I, I was pregnant and in my mind, probably never going to be pregnant again. And I was eating the chocolate chip cookies and, and I was loving it. So that's where yeah, I was You deserve at. to relax at that stage. You're good. <laughs> so anyways, but it did. It took me a year to take off the weight, which wasn't a lot of fun. But, you know, it, it was what it was. It What was I trying to say? <laughs> it was a situation that I had to deal with, I guess. Um, I'm really I'm, gl- I'm glad we're talking about I guess the things you, you you and you and Ashton kind of talking about the concerns that um, you hear from women in terms of like them starting resistance training. I just I want to make sure that we we cover that well. So is there anything else that you you want to share that frustrates you about I guess why maybe some of the wider population don't exercise and maybe that's more relevant to women. I don't know if that makes sense. Well. It does. I mean, I think that that it has to be a priority. You know, oftentimes when we first moved here um, in 1995, Doug um, was hired by the director of his ER group and they had a family of four kids. And I was in the car with her and we were getting ready to go to dinner. And they were one of these families where they had four boys and they had a gallon of milk. No, actually, they had two gallons of milk in the refrigerator, and the top was off the gallon of milk. They never put the lid on it because what was the point? You know, they were going through a gallon of milk every few hours. Mm -hmm. So I asked her, I said, you know, between your husband's career, he was director of the group, and these four boys, this was before we had children, you know, do you feel like you take a back seat to all this? And she looked at me, and she says, I'm not even in the car. And so... Oftentimes, I think as women, um, we are in that uh, mindset of, of feeling like, you know, all this stuff is happening around us and we're making it happen and our needs are not going to get figured into, you know, the week planning. So I think it's basically, you know, just taking that step to make sure that, okay, be flexible, but get your needs met somewhere in that week and and get that time scheduled for you. So I think that, you know, a lot of women fall into that category of putting themselves not first in the whole family dynamic or not even last. I mean, they're not even in the car. So, you know, my advice would be get in the car, stay in the car, (laughs) stay relevant. And, you know, you may not have it work perfectly for yourself, but just make it work within, be adaptable. And then, it, you know, you can do like, you know, if you have free weights at home, use your free weights. You know, I go to Fike with Doug every once in a while and I'm using free weights in the women's room. So, you know, use what's available. You may not be able to get that class that you're wanting. You know, some people want to go take a class or, you know, weight training seminar or something. Just get in there and start working um, with the free weights if you're comfortable. Work on machines and equipment. You know, over at the university, they have a line of life fitness. I'll work out there. I work with the hammer strength. You know, when I'm not at the facility... I'll go to Fike and, you know, I've got the machines that do what I want them to do. Just find that in your life. You know, whatever is close by, if you have a YMCA, um, if you don't have that and you have an ultimate gym at home, use that. Just use what's available and then work from there. Because as well, like if you're not looking after yourself, you can't look after your four kids and your husband's. Sure. Yeah, you're susceptible as well then to, you know, like you say, being weak or getting ill because you're not looking after yourself. So, yeah, that's really great advice. Sure. Just keeping yourself, um, keeping your training in mind 
um, and keeping it in the forefront of the planning during the week because it's easy to let it slip. When everything's going on, it's like, well, I can put that off until next week. But just make sure you keep it in your week's planning. How does it go? You can't help yourself. You can't help. No. no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love it, somebody else? Do you know what that's from, Wendy? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's from this show called RuPaul's Drag Race, which Ashling's addicted to. And... Oh, okay. I have not seen that. No. <laughs> you watch it. It's really good. Okay. <laughs> what are your go-to TV shows and things like that? Well, if, you, if you have any. It's funny. Um... I have not watched TV and really been um, into much media for about, well, probably going on five years now. Um, But my son brought fire to our house in in the form of fire stick. And so the fire stick that we plug into the television allows us to watch Amazon Prime. And so I've got addicted right now to the good wife. So that's, and Doug and I are, we're addicted together. So we're watching that together and we're looking at other, you know, shows to watch in the fall because apparently we're like in between seasons right now. So we're playing catch up and I think we're on season, we just started season four of the good wife. So, so that's what I'm watching now, but I did, I went on a media free diet for a while. Um, where my go-to publication was People Magazine. And I basically just followed celebrity news just to stay up with um, what was going on in popular culture. And the rest of it, I just felt like I needed a break from. So that's what I can tell you about. Do you, <laughs> about uh, you, shows. <laughs> do you, no, it's interesting. Do you, do you and Doug uh, like have date night or do you, how do you arrange to spend time together? Like with, with such a crazy schedule? Well, that is a excellent question. Um, when the kids were younger, we always had a date night. It was once a week. We had a sitter came in, we went out as they've gotten older, we've been able to combine date nights in different forms, like, you know, go out for coffee during the day or go do our workout together, go walk together. So as they've gotten bigger and we can take our opportunities if they're out with friends or whatever, then everything's gotten a lot more flexible. So we can just, you know, work in a coffee. But yeah, it is priority. When I'm looking at the schedule during the week, I'll say, you know, you're spending the night with a friend. You're going to be visiting friends at the movies. This is where we're going to be during this time. But when they were younger, every week was, a, you know, I looked at the schedule. We set up a appointment with a sitter and we went to dinner and a movie. And that just went on for years until we could get to the point where our kids, um, could be a little bit more flexible with our schedule. Do you want to move on to the next questions? Oh, okay. Um, so my kind of last bonus question was, um, okay. what <laughs> advice would you give your younger self? So a lot of like the kind of, I don't know, YouTube videos have celebrities yeah. writing letters to their 18 year old self. So yes. what would you put in that letter? Gosh, that's an excellent question. I have to think about that. Um, Well, you know, I've got a majorly type A personality. And, you know, maybe relax a little bit. I have to tell myself that over and over at this age, if you can believe that, that, you know, I need to really take it in and smell the roses, so to speak. And my younger self, you know, I think that when you're younger, you're you're always focused on that next goal. It's always that next, you know, hurdle that, you know, if it's, you know, buying your first home or, you know, whatever it is that you've set for yourself. And um, sometimes the more important things can get lost in that process. And seemingly you go from 30 to 50 in the blink of an eye. So if, if I was to advise my younger self, it would be to stop and, and pay attention and enjoy the moment and not feel so pressured that all of life's existence doesn't hinge on this. So there you have it. 
that's, that's good advice. Uh, I'm interested in your morning routine, Wendy. What does the first 90 minutes of your day look like? Well, it go, I go straight to the coffee maker. <laughs> so um, usually I have um, two cups of coffee and then I, you know, I start with whatever I've got. I don't have a set routine because our life doesn't lend itself to that. I mean, that's our constant challenge in our house. And so I guess the start of my day always starts with two cups of coffee. And then from there, it just depends on who's going where, <laughs> what's, what's happening, how late um, Doug has worked, you know, if we're getting out of the house so that he can sleep during the day. Um, you know, I don't, unfortunately, I can't tell you I've got a set routine because I just okay. don't. So <laughs> these are these are like rapid fire questions, by the way. So the questions are rapid, but the answers don't have to be rapid. So don't think okay. you have to answer really short and sweet. <laughs> okay. um, what's what is some bad advice that you hear in the world often? Um, regarding exercise, it could be that or anything that comes to mind. Hmm. So exercise would be good if you have one for that. Well, a lot of what I'm hearing in exercise involves ballistic movement. And that, you know, I would definitely categorize as bad advice. Um, you know, bad advice in terms of trying to give advice and act like your advice is the end all be all advice for any individual. I mean, I have friends who have reached their own conclusions, and I think that's what everyone needs to do. It's their own journey. It's their own experience. I have a friend, you know, I wouldn't tell somebody, never go to Weight Watchers. She goes in, and she weighs in, and it keeps her accountable. So, you know, ballistic movement, to answer your question, ballistic movement would be, you know, bad advice. But, you know, people have all kinds of it, of things that that they would consider bad advice that I'm coming along um, as I age to see that if it works for you as an individual um, and it's not harmful, you know, you're doing it thoughtfully with regard to, you know, if you're walking or lifting weights or whatever chosen activity you have, um, I would, I would focus on, on not, listening to advice <laughs> following your own advice <laughs> in a roundabout way that's the answer to the question I, I mean I think that everybody you know comes to their own conclusion and when you listen to all this noise all the time that's where the confusion comes in and basically with each person I've ever spoken to about exercise what it comes down to is they already know what to do. They just haven't decided to do it yet. And so listening to advice and advising good, bad, or whatever, I think that, you know, as, as people finding your way through exercise and diet, um, you need to come to your own conclusions. And I think that if you just sat down and thought about it, most people would already know that they have all the answers. They just have to decide to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate what you're saying. I, I would only challenge the exercise component because I still think a lot of people think that they can, you know, run off all of their body fat and they don't see necessarily understand the value of strength training. And uh, I was just thinking, do you get, you know, when you tell other women like what you do for exercise, do they like raise an eyebrow and think, well, why would you do that? Like, do you get a lot of pushback at all? Yes, absolutely. I mean, there are a lot of people that, you know, are big devotees and in all kinds of different um, endeavors, you know, yoga, Pilates, um, CrossFit, you know, a lot of them love ballistic training. They'll, they'll train in the aerobic realm and um, really, really feel like they are burning those calories instead of... Um, Instead of looking at it in terms of what are you really doing with this form of exercise. So, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't judge anybody for 
taking any kind of class that they want to take. But you're right that if they think that by taking a spin class, they can eat themselves out of, I mean, they can spin themselves out of their diet, that is absolutely the wrong way of looking at it. But if they're going and they're enjoying it and it's a big release for them, you know, more power to them. I've got lots of friends that do lots of different things, but if they're doing it because they think, okay, well, I can have that half a chocolate cake when I get home, you know, then I would say, no, those are the wrong reasons because you're really not consuming, you know, two tablespoons of that chocolate cake by spinning. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. There is bad advice, but I'm definitely not going to judge anybody who's out there trying and enjoy something. If they're doing it because they enjoy it and it's more for social reasons is what I hear most of the time, you know, it can be a very solitary endeavor when you're training, when you're weight training. And so people have different needs as well um, at different points in their life. And some people want to go and be with a group of people and, and partake in something they feel like they're sharing together. So that's how I feel about that. <laughs> yes, that's great. That is really interesting. Um, Joe, just a uh, thought just came up for me. Um, I remember Doug talking about Arthur Jones and he said that uh, you both met Arthur Jones together and I'm not sure how many times you both met. I believe that's correct, isn't it? You've met Arthur Jones before, isn't yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And uh Doug Doug mentioned that he was uh kind of jealous because I think I think he mentioned that you found him quite attractive. Is that correct? <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that. I found him quite intimidating. <laughs> he um he was one of the most intimidating um individuals I've ever been in their presence actually. It was somewhat frightening to be around him. Um he spoke very candidly about anything that came to his mind. And um, he had a very um, intimidating persona. So, yeah, he was scary. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> he was scary oh. to me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, but his, you know, I've commented to Doug that his younger pictures, when I saw, you know, pictures of Arthur Jones, that he was definitely an attractive man. And in fact, we were um, down in the Keys recently, and they had pictures of Hemingway. And when I saw Hemingway, I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, I can see, you could see that um, level of gamesmen, kind of the, that shared um, level of masculinity in their two personalities. But um, when I was around him personally, much you know, he was much older. I found him to be very intimidating. Interesting. <laughs> I know Doug's going to kill me for probably saying that. Um, <laughs> no. I, I probably shouldn't have. I might edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So have you got any questions that come to mind or are you happy for me to go on? Um, I was just going to ask, uh, I found, because when Lawrence was saying, you know, you get pushback from people when you lift weights, uh, I yeah. find that I get a lot of people, uh, men, mansplain lifting weights yeah. to me. It does the same thing happen to you, even though you're married to Dr. Doug McGough. You know, um, the common question that I have asked is how much weight are you using? You know, they want to, they want me to give them an exact number so that they can see, well, what are you really doing with this? They're, they're not impressed by the fact that, you know, you, you partake in high intensity training and they want to know the weight. And I have to tell them truthfully, I don't even know the weight that I'm using, you know, I, I couldn't tell you what it was and that's not really what the focus is. And so then it's kind of this circular talking, usually with men, that's kind of where it goes. It's kind of like, what do you mean you don't know how much weight you're lifting? And it's like, well, that's not the point. I'm lifting weight slowly over time and I'm lifting as much weight as I can move under a very limited time frame. And so just the concept of that seems to be um, met with a lot of skepticism. You were asking that earlier, and I don't think I answered that portion of the question. But, 
Yeah, I think men and women are both very skeptical about what is this? This doesn't make any sense. And when you try to explain it, you have to just get to the point where you say, well, you just need to go and try it. And then you can realize that you're not using the weight. You're not flinging the weight into the air and using momentum. You're actually doing some hard physical work and and you're not um, you're not getting away with anything here. So it's not a matter of flat, you know, doing reps very quickly and using all your momentum, you know, that you gain on each rep to push you through. So that that kind of reorients the conversation. Yeah, we've had yeah. some uh, funny <laughs> looks, looks sometimes when we've been in a commercial gym doing yeah. kind of slow reps and yeah. Lawrence has been timing me and people just think we're weirdos. But that's yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and they're in in their defense. I mean, they're really curious. It's like, why would you move the weight that slowly? And even you know, like the first YouTube videos that I did at Ultimate Exercise, there were some comments like, "Wow, that's really slow." <laughs> so I'm like, you know, but what do you do with that? I mean, you just you go, you do what you do. You try to talk to people about you know how it could affect their life over time, and you know, you leave it at that. Everybody's going to come to their conclusion eventually. It, it seems so obvious to us in terms of the benefits and why it works, but it's uh, it's not obvious to a lot of other people. That's correct. Um, I want to be respected of your time, Wendy. So I've only got a f- couple other questions, if that's okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are you really not very good at? Oh, what am I? Well, patience, one. I'm, I'm not very good with patience. I am a very um, impatient person in general. Um, what else am I not good at? Hmm. Patience is number one. Um, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't say I'm a stellar athlete, you know, at all. I just go and do the best I can. I mean, you know, it's not like, I'm an Olympic power lift or anything like that. So, you know what I mean? I'm just an average person like everybody else lifting weights and, and doing what you can do. Um, so I don't know what else I'm not good at. No, that's <laughs> I do fine. very few things. So I do very few things so that I can um, kind of do the things that I take on well. Um, so I try to eliminate you know, getting in the, and probably what I'm not good at is risk taking. There you go. <laughs> I take on, I take on few things because I know I can do them well, but I don't venture out into a lot of different things that maybe wouldn't come as naturally to me and it would be more risky to endeavor. So I'm not good at, at risk taking in that way. Patience and risk taking. A good answer. Um, um, what books have you reread the most yourself? Well, that's interesting because Doug and I are completely different in that realm in that he'll reread books all the time. And me, I don't really reread. Um, I'm reading The Little Bookshop in Paris right now, and it's gotten painfully slow for me, and I haven't picked it up, you know, like in a week. So you know, I'll get started on a book and sometimes I won't get all the way through. Um, But I have never been one to reread. And, you know, Doug's argument to me is always that, well, I'm always getting another perspective. I'm always learning something new. And for me, it just doesn't hold my interest for whatever reason. And it's the same way with movies. I mean, Doug could, you know, (laughs) Oh my gosh, you know, we can't even get started on this subject, but with his favorite movies, he will have rewatched many times and and I'll come upstairs and, you know, he's watching X movie again for the 50th time and I'm like, "You know what? I just can't do this." So, you that's know, very that's where uncanny. we diverge. Cuz Ash is laughing because I do the exact same thing. I watch like the same movies over and over. What what movies does Doug watch over and over? Is there any that come to mind? Uh, Gosh, um, you know, I mean, just classic movies, anything that's classic that's yeah. on TV, he will have seen. Um, 
you know, I, the next time you talk with him, he, he can tell you probably his top three. I love that. <laughs> do you, and, on, and on that, do you remember what books he was rereading? I'm always, I'm always trying to understand people's reading lists so I can prioritize my own. Do you remember what he was rereading? Or if you don't know, I can ask him. That's fine. Um, I'm sitting here trying to think of what he has reread most recently. And you would have to ask him that no, because right now he's got different books going. Usually when he's reading, he has three different books going. And, you know, he's at various stages and they're in various places. And, and you would have to ask him. That's <laughs> right. I'm, uh, this is about you, Wendy, not Doug. So I'm, uh, it's okay. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get the inside scoop on Doug, you see, what the stuff okay. he doesn't tell me. So. <laughs> well, these are good questions. And, and he'll, you know, he's... He um, loves to read and, you know, he loves to reread. So that would be a good, good question for him. Yeah, I'm excited about a, a part four that hopefully we'll do at some point. Um, yes. Okay. So what's the best way for people to find out more about you, Wendy? And uh, do you have a website or, I don't know, no. social media or anything like that? No, I, I do limited social media. Um, and I've posted some you know, parts of my workout on Instagram or actually Doug has posted it. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted women to feel like, you know, this form of exercise is not an exclusively male form of exercise, that women can do this and they can do it well. Um, and that anybody of any age can can um, participate so that's why I have a presence on Instagram was mainly you know this is what you can do you know I put in um, negative only reps with the uh, chin-ups because I feel like you know women can start I mean they can get up on the bar and start doing negatives and you can start anywhere you just need to get started and so that was the main reason why um, I chose to be on Instagram and the same thing with, you know, those few YouTube clips, you know, from ultimate exercise, the same thing. It's like, don't be intimidated by machines. Um, you can get in there with a personal trainer and do amazing things. That's good advice. And I shall feature all of your videos and all your Instagram videos on the blog post for this. Cause I think it's very liberating for men and women to, to see your, you know, what you're able to, to achieve. Um, I just wanted to thank you for uh, being a huge inspiration because obviously it is really good to see a woman doing these sorts of exercises, not just, you know, all the guys. And I wanted to thank Lawrence as well for having me on the podcast so I could talk to you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank, and thank you so much for having me. It's actually been a lot of fun. Cool. And to all, to all the listeners, uh, to find the show notes um, and the links and everything that we talked about for this episode and all episodes, please go to 15minutecorporatewarrior.com forward slash podcast. That's 15 minute, one five minute. And until next time, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. Before you head off, head on over to corpwarrior.com to get your free ebook with six interview transcripts with some of my top guests, including Dr. Doug McGuff, Drew Bay, and Bill De Simone, on how to optimize muscle gain, fat loss, and overall health in an efficient, effective, and sustainable way. These transcripts are not verbatim, deliberately. Instead, they've been transcribed in an easy read format to make it more enjoyable and easier for you to quickly pick out what you need and start getting results. To get your ebook, head on over to corp warrior.com that's c-o-r-p warrior.com and enter your email address then check your email for an email from me with a confirmation link once you click the link you'll be instantly redirected to a pdf version of the transcripts